Can you tell us something about the, the songs, songs you've written for the movie? Well, I haven't written those songs just yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't have written a script like this. It's beyond me. I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, why do you think funny about Ronald Reagan? Wow, <laughs> oh, I mean, what's so funny about that? <laughs> yeah. Hasn't the world of film and music passed Bob Dylan in the 60s? Well, I don't know. You know, the 60s are gone, you know? Do you regret the myth of the legend that surrounds you? No. How much are they paying you to make the film? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs>
No, I got a note saying it's from Democrat. Uh-huh. Yeah, no. Yeah, Leg room. Bob, could you put the put your mic on? He's got it himself. I think we're one else. Just stolen Fiona. <laughs> While everyone's sorting out their mics, if there's anyone who hasn't yet had a chance to read the notes in uh, all the excitement, Hearts of Fire um, begins filming on Tuesday week, and it's a contemporary drama with music. Uh, the story is written by Joe Esterhouse, who last collaborated with Richard Markand here on The Jagged Edge. It's the story of a young singer, Molly Malone, who's played by Fiona, and her relationships with a legendary American rock musician who's retired. Uh, that's uh, Billy Parker, played by Bob Dylan, and with a top British rock star, James Colt, who's played by Rupert Everett. So if I can just uh, introduce the people on the table this morning. On my left is the film's director, Richard Marquand. Morning. Who's returning to Britain after The Jagged Edge and uh, Return of the Jedi. On his left, Bob Dylan, who plays Parker and who's also written some of the music for the film. Next to him is the American singer, Fiona, who's making her acting debut as Molly Malone. One episode of Miami Vice, notwithstanding, I think. <laughs> next to him, is, uh, next to her is Rupert Everett, uh, who plays James Colt. And at the far end of the table, the film's line producer, Ian Smith, whose most recent credits include Local Hero, The Killing Field, and The Mission. And Ian, just before we start, it, can you tell us if this is a British film? Sure. <clears throat> this is, uh, is a British film, um, which will be shot for six weeks in around London and South Wales, and then five weeks in Canada. We'll be based in Toronto. All of the American sequences, for a whole variety of complex reasons, we're shooting in, in Canada. Richard, is it, uh, is it a musical or a film about music? How would you define it? No, this film really is a film about stardom. It's a film about whether you can handle stardom when the hot light actually comes to shine on you. Can you, in fact, deal with your dream when it becomes reality? And it's also a love story. We set up an incredibly hot, triangle of forces between the two men who are basically vying for various reasons in, uh, for the favors of this young, rather talented American girl called Molly Maguire when she comes to this country. Incidentally, it is in fact set in the world, the contemporary world of music, so that in fact there is a lot of music within the film, but it's all integral and organic to the story. Bob, you, you've directed a film yourself, Ronaldo and Clara, and you're not very well known for uh, singing or, or speaking other people's words. What, what, why did you decide to commit to this film? Oh, it was just the you know, right time, right place, the right words. The right words. <laughs> okay. They're the good words. Have the three of you met before this morning? Yes. Yes, the truth from Fiona. We three, <laughs> we three know each other pretty well. Right. Rupert is uh, somewhat, he was away making a film in Colombia, so he wasn't able, in fact, to meet up with us um, quite so often as the three of us did, but uh, he's getting into the swing of it now. Welcome back, Rupert. Thank you. Rupert, are you going to do your own singing in the film? 
Uh, yeah, I think, I, sp I suppose, yes, I hope so. The, the first time? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the first time for you? Mm. Mm -hmm. And what about Fiona, acting? Have you been taking acting classes? Yes. <laughs> How are they covering called up? Madonna, asked her what it's like to be a girl singer. <laughs> what, what advice did she give you? No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's an American joke, sorry. <laughs> okay. Can we have some questions then? Uh, open up the floor. Yes, I'm Sunday time. Oh. I'd like to know why one of the biggest poets and musicians of this century feels he has to play someone who's a retired star. Why isn't he a performing star as he is such a great star? Why is he oh, That's a nice question. Oh. Well, that's just the movie. I want to know more. It's just a movie. Why aren't you writing poetry? Why aren't you doing the things you're really great at? Excuse me? Why aren't you writing poetry and doing the things you're really best at? Well, I do. But I was taking some time off here, you know. So you're Getting something different. Are you, does that mean you're relaxing? Yeah. So you're not going to be trying? Excuse me? So you're not going to be trying? He's leading the witness. Oh, no, no. I'm going to be trying very much. Bob Dylan's written four songs for this movie. Can you tell us something about those, please? Can you tell us something about the films you've written, Bob? No, the, the, the songs, songs you've written. songs for the movie. Well, I haven't written those songs just yet. Well, I'm about to. <laughs> what are they going to be about? They're going to be about the movie. Are they going to be protest songs? Or? I hope so, yeah. <laughs> If Richard allows him to be here. That's Dr. V, man. Protesting about what? Protesting about uh, all the elements in the movie, you know. You have to see the movie, then. You seem very uncertain, Mr. Dillon. I mean, do you know a great deal about this movie yet? 10.30 in the morning. 11 o'clock for us. Yeah, I know, I know enough about the movie. I didn't write the movie. So a lot of questions you maybe want to ask the writer. I don't know if it's interesting in anybody but you. What? I don't know if it's interesting in anybody but you in this in this hall. You know, well, I'm listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you taken any singing lessons? Can you sing? I had singing lessons. So are you actually doing? Uh, you are. What's this stuff? Singing? Not singing? Not singing? Not singing? Yes. Uh, various different people. We have songs. He'll be singing songs by Wang Chung and Swain and Jolly and Bruce Woolley. What are you contesting about? What? Is to be a rap star was one of your fantasy. Is it dream about it? Oh, ambitions. Yeah. I'm sorry from the Guardian. Um, can I ask Bob Dylan? He says it's the right place, as well as being the right time. Um, is, is that place England? What do you think of England? It seems to be the last year. Do you like England? Oh, yeah, I love it. Um, what are your thoughts on this country? I just got here yesterday. Are you looking forward to working here? Huh? Are you looking forward to working here? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You took your name from Dylan Thomas. I've never been back to Wales. I see you're going back to now. And uh, are you still meeting Dylan? Oh, yeah. Will you be making a trip back to his village to where he was born and raised? We can. We get very close. We're, we're very close. Right. We're going to be very close. <laughs> <laughs> Stand out as opposed to any other movie. I'm not really doing nothing right now. It seems like a good thing to do. Yeah, they're really. <laughs> we seem to like each other. And... Is that right? Did you, like, did you like me? I like you. We get yeah, I sort of like you too. a lot. <laughs> yeah. That helped. After, after that. In the words of Billy Parker, uh, it says here, you say, you wake up, you're a star, so you're a star. But there ain't nothing to you no more. You're empty. Is that a sentiment that you would agree with? Some stars are like that, yeah. Are you? No, I'm not like that, but I'm playing another character who is like that. I'm getting into my character right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
tell us what it is that you find fascinating in this Well, he's, he's a very uh, self-made person. Nobody ever gave him anything. Doesn't get to take it all. Why didn't you write the script yourself? <laughs> oh, I couldn't have written a script like this. It's beyond me. I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Are you so modest? <laughs> you're pretending to be an adequate, you're one of the great writers of this age. You're trying to script yourself. I don't know, I'm just trying something different. Is it a one-off? Uh, the reason why I was interested in this is that uh, you have to be able to write something that you can understand. Fiona. Can you tell me a little bit about the beginning, the starting of Wild Adventure? I'm sorry, I don't understand. How, how, did, how did you become involved in the venture? What were the beginnings for you? Um, Richard, so the budget of the movie will be seven million dollars below the line. <laughs> I get about six. And he gets about six and three quarters or something like that. It's very, very fair. I'm being ironic, by the way. That would not, I, would, I would not. Uh, I'm afraid I can't give you any of those details as you would expect. But um, we believe that uh, in the arrangement that we made with Bob and with everyone here at this table and with all the people that are coming together to make this film. We've been fair, we've been, um, we haven't in any way exceeded what we would consider as British filmmakers, um, as distinct from Hollywood or other places. Uh, the kind of money that we're paying everyone is very fair and very straightforward. And you should know that, I think. But this is, in coming here today, you're seeing people coming together really in a way for the first time. We begin shooting in the very near future. And in a sense, uh, it's, uh, it's what happens from now on that matters, rather than what's happened in the past. Um, most of it will come from Lorimar in the United States. It's one of the sad facets of life for us in Britain that um, at the moment, particularly this year, there isn't a great deal of money available in the UK. But nevertheless, we will continue to try to make films which have a British consciousness. And one last question. Why are the American sequences being shot in Canada? Strategic and practical reasons rather than anything else. Is there still a special uh, no, it's not for that reason. No, it's purely production reasons. Is there any British finance? There is no British finance in the film. We're told that the film will be distributed in the States in the summer of next year. But it doesn't say anything about distribution in this country. You time off while you're doing your filming, so you can be able to sneak off and play. And if you're not, when are we going to see you playing in this country next? I don't know. We just finished a tour. So maybe sometime. A couple of years. A couple of years. What are your plans after this film? Oh, just getting out. Drift around. I think we're are going you very easily bored, Mr. Duncan? I think we may be touring again. Are you very easily bored, Mr. Duncan? Well, I'm never bored. Have you any notion of how bored you're going to be doing this picture? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'll be hard. Well, not really, you know, I don't consider myself a big star. Other people. But you are a poet and a singer, and you are taking on the role of an actor, which is by its very nature a completely different kind of role. And like, how are you going to handle that? Why do you want to do that? I'll find I mean, you, you appear to be a rather introverted person, if I may say so. Whereas you're going to be playing a very expressive role, presumably. No, I'll figure it out. <laughs> Can I ask why you want to be an actor? No, I think I had to do once before. Yeah. In fact, I'm clearly the kid, though, wasn't more of an improvisation than any old part. You improvised the part more than the colors. Well, yeah, you know, we used to do TV shows where they used to have follow the script. Yeah. Question there. 
Okay, so the big thing in America and the music now seems to be feeling good about America. How does this um, go along with the Bob Dylan protest songs of the 60s, which you're apparently going to be writing and singing in this film? I don't know. Do you feel good about America? I'm all stuff good about America, yeah. America's go big, you know? It's not like, it's like, there's all kinds of different parts to it, you know? But the parts that you used to write about, you felt very bitter about and very contemptuous. <coughs> you were very funny about. Why are you being funny about Ronald Reagan? Wow, I mean, what's so funny about that? <laughs> <laughs> a terrible joke on the world. Wow. I guess what I'm saying is, hasn't um, hasn't the world of film and music passed Bob Dylan of the 60s by? I don't sound like an English accent to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a little down home there. <laughs> well, I don't know. You know, the 60s and 60s are gone. Yeah. You know? Do you regret the myth of the legend that surrounds you? No. I mean, you give that impression. Well, you know, it, it, it's uh, impressions can be this, uh, you know, they're uh, misleading. Have you lost your enthusiasm? For what? For, for life and for writing. <coughs> Yeah. Mr. Dillon, uh, you've talked today about doing this movie because it's different, you've said. You, uh, in the past, have been in charge of your own destiny as an artist, but recently we've seen you collaborate with Sam Shepard to write an epic song. Here you're going to be collaborating with others to make a movie. Does this mean that uh, you've seen a change in your own artistic career and you're now uh, going to do more things that involve collaborating with others, being involved with other people's projects, rather than simply doing your own work. Well, I guess it's not so much other people's project as, you know, having somebody work on the same project with. How did the uh, project with Sam Shepard evolve? Uh, we wrote a bunch of things a few years ago. Mm -hmm. If you were writing times are changing now, how would you change them? The words. Huh? If you were rewriting times are changing now, if you were writing it now, how would you write it differently? Or would you? No, it would be the same. Are you saying the 80s are the same as the 60s, or is it something different to protest now? Well, you know, if something's good, it, it, it's... It, transcends the whatever generation or date you know that you, that you write it. Question for Fiona then. Have you got enough Lady there. I'm from New Jersey, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> here. That's what I love about the script. It seems from the synopsis, it's very much a story form, but a sort of happy ending. <clears throat> Is that a conscious model? Not really, no. In what sense? Bob. About 140 people. Bob will be there. Uh, Bob will be there, yep. And whereabouts? Uh, yes, I do. Like <laughs> <laughs> milking a stone. Uh, no, I, I, the reason I say this is because we expect there will be a great deal of interest. Which is, concert, like, so the, there are some concert sequences, yes. yeah. and there may well be a concert sequence in Bristol. <laughs> but what we mustn't have is, is, uh, is a situation where we are being mobbed by thousands of people who are obviously uh, on a, a totally different kick from this film. That's actually very, very important, not just for Bob's uh, peace of mind, but also for the safety and the, the welfare of the people that we do want to be there. That's very important. Can you tell us which the, the mansion is in Hampshire? No, I can't. It's part of our arrangement with the owners of the mansion that they have asked. It took a lot of negotiating. Um, it's never been seen on film before. It's a beautiful house, and uh, they've given us permission to film there on the strict condition that we don't 
um, specify where it is, wherever possible. Bob Dylan, a lot of musicians haven't been entirely successful in their attempts to cross over uh, into films. What impressions have you got of the acting movies, for example, of Mick Jagger and David Bowie? <coughs> I like them all in the film. Chris. Yeah. Have you studied their attempts in any way? Have you tried to learn anything from them? <laughs> Do you see yeah. many films? Huh? Do you see many? Do you watch many films? And if so, what sort of film? Mm, I don't remember the last film I saw. Couldn't have been. I don't know. Briefly, we bought all the albums, and now we're 40. Have you got anything to say to it? <laughs> the act of the. <laughs> what books? Yeah, I was reading a biography of uh, Ulysses S. Grant. You used to get very drunk, I believe. Who did? Ulysses S. Grant. Yeah. What else I haven't gotten to that what part. Else is <laughs> What else about him is interesting to you? A drunken Civil War general from the, uh, the northern side. I thought you'd sympathize with the South. Oh, God, it's mad as well. I don't know, I thought it was okay. The artists have to rehearse this afternoon, so we've only got five more minutes. Can we? Get one fact. What? I'm just trying to get one fact out of this press conference. <laughs> Which fact would you like, sir? How much longer do you need to continue to make great rock and roll music? Huh? How much longer are you going to continue making great music? Excuse me, I wonder if Mr. Lillard can put the microphone after the sound recording sound. It's on the tape. How much are they paying you to make the film? I've already answered that. I can tell you it's a very reasonable sum. And there's not... Uh... It's not enough. <laughs> You've been important in this country, saying that you did the last tour with Patty for the money. Can we take it as a new philosophy? Well, you always doing tours for the money. I mean, you know, what's so new about that? Do you still enjoy them? Where did you learn Belle Isle? Huh? Where did you learn Belle Isle? Where? Very simple question. How old are you? Twenty-four. And Rupert? Twenty-six. <laughs> I was watching the Maltese Falcon recently. And it was full of lines that sounded as though you could have written them. Do you recall uh, watching that film before you uh, wrote the Empire Burlesque songs at all? Which film? The Maltese Falcon. I might have seen it. I don't know. Were there lines from the movie? What? Were they really? <laughs> <laughs> Is it one of your favorite films, then? Which lines were there? Do you have to them? Although you are playing retired rock star in the movie, are you actually appearing live within the film? And will the concerts be open to the public? Well, not necessarily. Are you actually here? <coughs> hmm? well, yeah. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> there are a series of, just so you understand, there are a series of concerts throughout the film, and they're going from small up to large. Um, they will not be open to the public. They will be controlled film events. A couple of last questions, one there. Oh, are you deliberately elusive with the press, or just shy? <laughs> <laughs> um, can, I, can I just ask, are the heart ratings going to be in the movie, and are you going to put uh, forward with the heart ratings again? I don't think they're in this movie. But are you going to put forward with them again? Or is that finished? Maybe. Last question. Maybe in the second half. Rupert, um, does this topic of the language difference between our two countries um, amuse or intrigue you? Is it something that, you know? I'm, 
I don't feel there is a language difference. Not at all. No. <laughs> Probably not, he's been very busy. How much did he make in the States? A lot of money. About 50 million dollars. Yeah. We'll see you. Do I have to do it?